you guys heard about chemical and biological warfare agents that could be used for terrorism. Well, I'm here to talk about the other side of that, the explosive side, such as the ones that were used in the Boston Marathon bombing. I want everyone to take a second and imagine that you are a law enforcement official, and you get a call about suspicious activity going on at a residence. You get to the premises, and you enter to find this. Of course, you assume they're cooking something. They've been making something. But what have they been making? I'm sure most people's minds right now just jump to Walter White and Breaking Bad and getting mad. <laughs> but what if that's not right? What if this chemistry lab was being used to make something more dangerous? Something that if you're not careful around, could kill you and everyone around you. Would you be able to tell the difference between these two powders? Would you know which powder you can pick up and have no issues with? And which powder that if you touch the wrong way is going to go off? This one, it's sugar. You're not going to have a problem. Pick it up, throw it around, you're good to go. This one, it's an explosive. A type of explosive that if it gets too hot, or if you hit it too hard, you will set it off. It does not need to be in a bomb to cause damage. So you need to know when you are dealing with this type of powder. Now, what if someone had taken this powder and spread it on their front lawn to stop people from entering their premises? If you walked up to this house as a law enforcement official, would you look at this white powder on the ground and assume it's an explosive? What if it was just salt left over from a snowstorm? What if it was just fertilizer? You have no way of knowing. So we here at FIU have designed a method in order to detect for these explosives on site in a very inexpensive and quick manner using something called paper microfluidic devices. I will refer to them as paper chips when I talk about them. Now I'm going to start off by showing you guys how this would actually work. So the picture you saw on the slide was actually kind of big. It was a blown up version of our chips. But as you can see here, our chips are about the size of a stamp. And they look pretty basic. And you have some little white powder. So all you're going to have to do, take a little bit of this white powder, put it into a, a vial with some liquid in it. Our liquid that we've been using is basically just diluted nail polish remover. Give it a shake to mix it up. You're going to take your chip, put it in the cap, and stick the cap and the chip into the liquid. Now the device, it takes a few minutes to run. So while it runs, I'm going to explain how it works. So typical on-site detection that we use nowadays are going to involve canines. Canines will alert to an explosive. They will tell you that an explosive is present, but they won't tell you which one it is. Some of them are stable and can be handled using typical disposal techniques. But some explosives, as the one I described earlier, are not, and you're going to need special disposal techniques. So that canine is just going to tell you it's there, not what you need to do. The other item a lot of people use is ion mobility spectrometer. Now this is kind of big. It's not something you can throw in your pocket and walk around with. It's something you're going to need to have in your car or your vehicle and pull out when you need it. It's also not very cheap. You're looking at about 40 grand. And for me, I don't have 40 grand to spend on an instrument. It also can't really detect the type of explosives that were used in, say, the Oklahoma City bombing. So we wanted to find a way to do all of that at an inexpensive manner. So why did we decide to use paper? First of all, the training that is going to be involved with this device is very minimal. Basically what I showed you there. Take a little bit of powder, put it into some liquid, add the chip, let it run. You'll have a card 
to see what color changes are gonna occur based on what explosive is present. That's all the training you're gonna need. And the equipment. We don't want military personnel and law enforcement who are already carrying up to 60 pounds of equipment on them to have to add more. We want something very lightweight that you can throw in a pocket and just go. And by using the paper and a small amount of liquid and a small vial, you don't have a lot of weight to carry around. We also want to make sure that the personnel can be anyone. You don't have to be a specialist, or like me, who has spent 20 years of their lives in school, in order to be able to use these devices. We want to be able to train all personnel. And lastly, but probably most importantly, is the money. Since we're using paper, wax, and a very small amount of chemical reagents, we're looking at each device costing pennies, which means you can have almost 4 million devices for one of those ion mobility spectrometers. Now, how do we make them? We basically designed our chip using Microsoft Paint on a normal computer. And we printed it on what is called chromatography paper. Now, it is thicker than your typical printer paper that you're going to use every day. It's kind of like construction paper, but without any color. We printed it using a wax printer. When it first prints, the wax sits on top of the paper which doesn't help us, because that would let liquid go anywhere at once. What we need to do is melt that wax into the paper. So what we do is we use a laminator. It's going to melt the wax in, creating channels, which the liquid can follow into the different branches of the chip. Now what you can see here is a chip before and after it was run. So each of the branches have different chemical reagents present that can tell you different chemicals that you are going to be looking at. So for example, we can detect fertilizer-based explosives, like the ones used in the Oklahoma City bombing and the first World Trade Center attack. We can also detect high explosives, such as what the military uses. We can detect peroxide-based explosives, like the one used for the shoe bomber. And we can also detect pyrotechnic mixtures, like the ones used for the Boston Marathon bombing. So if we go back to our demo, You are able to see here, it's a little difficult to see, that the color in the lower corner went from a yellow to a red. So what I'm able to tell you, in the few minutes that I was standing up here and talking to you, is that the explosive that we were dealing with was one of the fertilizer-based explosive, such as the one that was used in the first World Trade Center attack. It took me seconds, and it took me very minimal equipment in order to be able to do that. So we hope that these devices will be able to be used by law enforcement and military personnel in order to keep them safer, in order for them to know what they are dealing with when they are on an explosive scene. And so they can pick the right techniques in order to be able to deal with the explosives that are in front of them. And that they will revolutionize on-site forensic testing. Thank you for your time.